Welcome to another Study Notes in Theory CISSP practice question review video. This one titled Cloud Access. Let's begin. What is the primary reason to implement federated identity management with single sign-on? Is it for A, a better user experience? For B, password synchronization? Or C, identity portability? Or D, multi-factor authentication? Right off, you should note the word primary. CISSP exam questions can use the following terms. Best, first, most, and primary. Best means that many choices will seem correct, and they are. But truly think deeply about your CISSP concepts, and you will crystallize in your mind the only answer that is better than the rest. The best answer. And first means one thing, know your processes. Think about the first step in the SDLC, the first step in the BCP DRP, the first step in incident response or risk management. And to supplement this, make sure to download for free a great document by a great man, the CISSP Process Guide by Fadi Soda, AKA Mad Unix. And the word most, uh, this is a tricky one. Most means that it happens frequently, either in quantity or to the greatest extent. And what does that mean? It means that it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it happens more so than the other choices. And the word primary, the one we're going to deal with in this question, means that out of all the choices, there is one choice that is seen as the most important function. Just, uh, just real quick, I said it is the one choice that is seen as the most important choice. But the real question is, seen as important by whom? It's seen by someone, but who's it seen by? Like, who, Why is it important to know who it is seen by, the word primary? Out of all the choices, it means that the correct choice is seen as the most important function, but seen by whom? The users? The employees? No, seen by the only people that matter when it comes to important business functions and decision making? Senior management, as seen by senior management. All those words that I mentioned, best, the first, the most, and primary are from the viewpoint of senior management because they are the ones that make the decisions that support those words. Management knows what's best. Management knows what's first. Management knows what's most. And management knows the primary reason. You gotta think like a manager. I, I wrote an entire CISB book about it, in case you're wondering who uh, this guy is talking to you right now. So what is the primary reason to implement federated identity management with single sign-on? If you're sitting in the Pearson View testing center for your CISP exam and you get a question like this, you have to first remind yourself what is federated identity management and what is single sign-on. Chances are, since you've been studying so hard and diligently, like the driven individual that you are, you kind of know what those technologies sort of are already. Like you kind of know that federated identity management is used for accessing different cloud-based applications in multiple different domains. And you kind of know that single sign-on is a way to enter your password in once to access multiple systems without having to enter a username and password for each one. Right? You kind of know all that. That's fine. If you know just that, you're okay. But what you really want to think about when encountering questions such as these is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of federated identity management and single sign-on? To any CISB instructors out there listening, enforce this concept with your students as well. Instead of asking them to think of the definitions of a term, go broader and ask them to define the advantages and disadvantages of each, and that'll take it so much further. T take it from me, that, that'll help them the most. Some advantages of federated identity management are, it connects different domains under a single federation. 
It brings together different organizations under the same umbrella. Users in a federated identity can use their local credentials, the ones they use to log into their own organization, and log into applications in those other different domains and organizations. Like, uh, you can log into your company, Rymar Tech, and then use the same credentials to access a customer relationship management application at the organization known as Zero Risk Security. Some disadvantages of federated identity management are it's complex to set up and it can be expensive. It takes a lot of coordination between different parties. It's not for small businesses. Federated identities are for large enterprises with lots of users and applications and generally just a lot of moving parts where conglomeration is essential, where having a federated cooperation is essential. Federated identities also require creating a lot of authorization policies. Because just because you're part of a federated identity doesn't mean you just get to access the resource of every domain and organization within that feather federation. Which means the configuration of the policies of the other organizations has to be done. Not just for you. Not just for your organization, but access control policies must be set up on all the other domains. Okay? So now you've thought of all the pros and cons of federated identity. I mean, of course I didn't go over everything in this video, otherwise we'd be here forever. But just, just like the main points. Basically the pros and cons I'm going to come up with are specific to this question. They're, they're designed to help you with this question. There's many others, but it'd be pointless to name them now if we're just going to focus on this question first. Uh, so now let's go over the pros and cons of single sign-on. The advantages of single sign-on include the simplicity and ease of entering just one password and be able to access multiple applications without authenticating to each one. Single sign-on also lessens password compromise because passwords are one of the most sought after things for, for attackers, right? So the less passwords you have to manage, the less chances of having it compromised, the less attack services to compromise. But of course, the disadvantage in lieu of those advantages is that if an attacker compromises your single sign-on credentials, they have access to all those other domains. But don't worry, SSO and cloud-based identity technologies come with a lot of security functions that prevent that very thing from happening. And even if it does, the damage can be reduced with proper access control. The very thing you were studying about in your CSP books. The other disadvantage of single sign-on is it is primarily used within the local organization, meaning you can't sign on to an application in Rymar Tech and then decide you want to connect to an application located at zero risk security. You just can't do that. The administrators and engineers at Rymar Tech set up single sign-on for only their company. They didn't set up anything at zero risk security and the administrators at Zero Risk Security didn't set up single sign-on so you can access their stuff. Okay, we, ha we have now identified all the pros and cons of the two terms found in this practice question, federated identity management and single sign-on. Knowing all this, let's check out the choices again. Choice A states the primary reason to implement federated identity management and SSO is for a better user experience. Sure, that can be the correct answer. It totally could. SSO is definitely a better experience than having to sign on to five or ten different applications when you sign into your work network every morning. And federated identity can make it so I can log into applications at other domains or organizations and really have seamless and efficient business-to-business -business partnerships going on. Choice A is a good answer, but is it the primary answer? We'll have to wait and see. Choice B is password synchronization. Password synchronization is when, for example, your standard workstation login credentials are synchronized across other applications. Sounds a lot like single sign-on, right? Couldn't be further from the truth. With password synchronization, Sure, your password is replicated on all the applications you need to use, but you still have to manually log into them. P 
password synchronization just stores your password hash on their database. The password is replicated onto other applications, so those other applications can verify your password after you manually enter it. There's nothing single sign-on about that. We can say that choice B is most likely not the answer. Password synchronization is not the primary reason to implement federated identity management with single sign-on. I mean, it's not single sign-on at all. It's, it's the complete opposite. It's multiple sign-on, or just regular sign-on. Let's look at choice C, identity portability. Identity portability. Portable identity. You can port your identity. You can take your identity other places. So far, this feels like a reason for both federated identity and single sign-on, doesn't it? Federated identity allows access to services across multiple different domains and organizations, while single sign-on allows access to different applications with just one set of credentials. How do these two statements relate to identity portability? Like this. And, oh, well, and... I'll just tell you, choice C is the correct answer, by the way, okay? What is identity portability? What is this generic sounding term? The, the only other time we've heard of portability in our CSB studies is when we study about HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The portability in that reference has been widened to mean that there is a secure transfer of medical and insurance coverage information across different health systems. It provides patients the ability to transfer their data across other healthcare providers. Even in the GDPR, there is a right to data portability provision, where a EU citizen can transmit their private data from one data controller to a different data controller. And I keep using the word different and, and other because it's going to make sense for the final answer. In terms of this practice question, identity portability means that a user can move their identity information from one domain to a different domain. Here's the trick to understanding what I just said. Single sign-on is most commonly used for utilizing one set of identity credentials to access different applications within the same domain, okay? SSO is most commonly used in your own standalone organization. You use single sign-on to easily log into multiple different apps within your own organization. Now with federated identity, the definition of which is the integration of multiple domains and organizations into a single federation, it means the federated identity management system can use the technology of single sign-on to permit a user to allow a user's identity to be portable across the domains within that federation. In other words, federated identity and single sign-on are not mutually exclusive. They don't always go together. They don't, they don't have to work with each other all the time. They can be standalone. But for the majority of the time, federated identity will use single sign-on. So if you're a company that has SSO and you have a changing business landscape and things are, your, your, your company is growing and it's scaling and you have to do business with other organizations, you can create a federation with those other domains. And then after doing so, you can use single sign-on that you used to use in your local company, but now you're going to use, in a, you use it in a federation. You can use single sign-on to allow users to have identity portability across all those domains and not just be locked into a single domain. And if you think all this sounds complex, difficult, and time-consuming to configure, you are absolutely correct, future security professional. But the payoff is the ease of access and transparency to the user. The primary reason for an organization to implement federated identity management with single sign-on is so identities can be used across multiple different domains. C is the correct answer. Choice D, multi-factor authentication, is a form of strong authentication and doesn't specifically relate to FIM and SSO. When initially signing on to your single sign-on, login prompt. You may be prom prompted to enter more than one set of authentication credentials, such as something you know and something you have. 
that's that's multi-factor authentication. You can use that in multiple different ways. Doesn't have to be for federated identity. Doesn't have to be for single sign-on. Okay. To review, remember we said primary means that out of all the choices, there is one choice that is seen as the most important function. And most important to who? Senior management. What do they care about? Better user experience? Sure, but that's not the primary reason. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> Is it for choice B, password synchronization? No, that's too technical of an answer for the CSP exam. Management, management doesn't care about that. Identity port portability? For sure, this is the answer because that's what federated identity management and single sign-on creates, identity portability. And you, and you know what else? It's really important to remember this one too, really important. And it's gonna bring it home for you. It's gonna make it all make sense for you right now after what I just say right now. Laws, regulations, governance, and compliance may demand it too. They may demand that you have identity portability across different domains. So you know for sure senior management is going to want that as the primary reason. Okay? And as we said, choice D, multi-factor authentication, is not the an answer because that just comes with the territory and that's not the primary reason. All right? Good luck on your CISP exam, future CISPs. Let me know when you pass. I love to hear it. And I love to spin that counter on my website. I think we're at 2,822 for right now. Who is going to be the 3,000th person? That's going to be a good day. Uh, and just real quick, you know everybody says this at the end of their videos. Uh, I don't really care about anyone subscribing to my YouTube channel or liking videos or notifications or pop-ups or whatever they say at the end of YouTube videos. I don't care about that. What I do care about is making you a security professional. Because if you win, we all win. And I'm not just saying that to make you feel good and, and to subscribe to my security course. I'm being genuine. Ask anybody that knows Luke Ahmed and has taken my CSB course. I'm being genuine. I've been saying that for eight years. And anyone you ask will tell you Luke Ahmed is authentic about strengthening our cybersecurity workforce and closing that cybersecurity skills gap. And I want to do that by offering my CSB security course that has helped over 2,800 CSP so far and by writing my book, How to Think Like a Manager for the CSB Exam, now one of the top rated books for studying for your CSP. And as of late, I'm also trying to help any beginners pass their, their entry level certified in cybersecurity exam and begin their security career through a little known thing called the Sonic Project, which I hope will become a big thing eventually. All links below in the description. Good luck on your CSP exam. Let me know when you pass once again, okay? Thank you for watching.